This is problem number one on page 65 of chapter three in Giancoli. It's a vector addition problem. It says a car is driven 215 kilometers west and then 85 kilometers southwest. What is the displacement of the car uh, from the point of origin? And they specify magnitude and direction and they want you to draw a diagram. Um, you should recognize this as a vector addition problem. Uh, there are two vectors uh, that are in question or, or, or part of the problem. One is 215 kilometers west. So I'm going to call that vector A and I'm going to say that that one is 215 kilometers. And I should recognize that it's a displacement vector, hence my units are kilometers. And the direction, if I use a coordinate axis system um, in a traditional 360 degree plane, I should realize that west is 180, 180 degrees. Uh, I could use west if I wanted to. I'm just, in this particular problem, going to use um, uh, 360 degrees. Vector B, on the other hand, is uh, the displacement vector that occurs afterwards, and that's the 85 kilometers southwest. So I'm going to call that 85 kilometers and comma. Instead of southwest, I'm going to use 225 degrees. Notice that I've referenced the positive x-axis for both of these angles here. I don't have to do that, but that's how I choose to do it. I think that's a, a good uh, um, kind of practice to get into. I'm going to go ahead and draw this first vector here. I've kind of graphically drawn it in. It's 215 units long, so its magnitude uh, and length are related to each other, and it's at 180 degrees. And I'm also going to uh, draw in my smaller 85-kilometer um, uh, displacement vector, roughly about here. And I should recognize that the goal here is to add these two vectors. Now, if I take vector B, the red vector here, and I move it head to tail, um, a little bit out of the uh, frame here, but that's pretty close, I should recognize that adding those two vectors head to tail produces my resultant vector, which is really what I'm looking for. How far am I from where I started from? And so you should see here um, that vector A, the one drawn in blue, plus vector B, the one drawn in red, produces this resultant. And I can write this out algebraically here, A hat plus B hat yields my re resultant. This is a vector addition problem that we've introduced fairly recently in class and so you should be familiar with kind of the approach. The first approach is to resolve your vector into its uh, constituent parts or its component. Uh, so step number one is going to be resolve everything that you have. The resolution of vector A should be pretty straightforward. You should look at vector A and say, wow, look at that. All of vector A is in the x direction. So I could say, all right, well, 215 kilometers is my x component of vector A, but specifically, that's negative. It's pointing to the left. Or if I wanted to apply my uh, traditional equation for resolving the x component, I could say that AX is equal to A cosine theta, where theta is 180 degrees. The cosine of 180 is negative 1, so I end up getting 215 times the cosine of negative 1, which is going to yield negative 215 anyway. Uh, kind of in a, in a similar vein, the y component of vector A uh, is going to be 0 kilometers. None of that vector is going up and down. And if, again, if I wanted to use my traditional um, trigonometric relationship, I could say that the y component is a times the sine of theta. And so therefore, I'd plug in 215 times the sine of 180, which is 0, yielding 0. Part b is a little bit tougher because um, we should recognize that b has both horizontal and vertical components. So I'll start with the horizontal component, and I'm going to say that b cosine theta is equal to the x component. Uh, when I plug that into my calculator, I end up getting 60.1 kilometers. But specifically, if I had plugged in 225 degrees, my calculator is going to recognize that since it's a third quadrant vector, the x component should be negative. You should be recognizing that yourself, even before you plug that into the calculator, that this x component will be pointing to the left. Likewise, the y component can be found by multiplying b times the sine of the angle theta. And even before I plug that into my calculator, I should recognize that it's going to be negative. Since this is ultimately 45 degrees down and to the left, I should see that the y and the x components will have the same magnitudes, 60.1. So I have magnitudes uh, for 
AX and AY and BX and BY, which leads me uh, to part two of the problem. Part two of the problem is going to be to find the components of your resultant. So I can say that the x component of my resultant is going to be uh, ax plus bx, and the y component of my resultant is going to be ay plus by. Uh, recognizing that ax is 215, uh, but it's negative 215, and bx is negative 60, uh, I get something on the order of 275.1 negative 275.1 kilometers being the x component of my resultant. My y component is a bit easier again here because the y component of um, vector a is 0, the y component of vector b is 60.1, so therefore the y component of my resultant is negative 60.1 kilometers. I finished the first two parts of the problem. In this next part of the problem, I need to figure out what to do with the components. I have Rx and Ry now, and uh, in order to make this easy, I'm just going to remove the other two vectors here because I'm no longer interested in them. I have the green resultant vector. I know it's going to be in the third quadrant. I have the components Rx, which points to the left, and I have the Ry component, which is small. It's only 60.1, and it points downward. I should also recognize that the x component of the vector here and the y component can be thought of as a right triangle. I can arrange it this way, seeing that the head to tail of the x and the y components gives me my resultant, that solid green vector, or I can arrange it uh, the other way, keep the x component where it was and move the y component uh, there to the end of it. So now I have a right triangle uh, that references the x-axis. This is the one here that I'm going to use. So I'm going to continue the problem, and I'm going to find the magnitude of my resultant, recognizing that this is the actual resultant, this is the x component, and here, this is the y component, that small uh, y piece pointing downward. I have a right triangle. Here's my angle theta that I'll eventually be looking for. I should recognize that I can use the Pythagorean theorem, where r is the hypotenuse. c squared is equal to b squared plus a squared, where b and a uh, are the... Um, y and x components. So I can say ry squared plus rx squared. Solving for the magnitude of my resultant, another way of describing the magnitude of your resultant is to put the vector in absolute value bars. In other words, the answer to this is simply going to be how big the resultant is, but it's not going to answer the question, what is the direction? So I'm going to go ahead and put those numbers in, 275.1 uh, squared. I'm going to leave the units off. It gets a little messy for me. Plus uh, uh, 60.1 squared. Now technically these are negative components, but a negative squared yields a positive. I'll put them in anyway to be formal about this, recognizing that I won't get any negative signs underneath uh, that root. Okay, so uh, finally the magnitude of my resultant, once I throw that into my calculator, uh, ends up being 281.6 kilometers. So that's how far away from home I am. Now I finally have to answer the, the question uh, uh, what angle this uh, theta is. By the way, this would be step three, finding the magnitude. Step four, finding the angle theta. You should recognize from class that I can use the tangent uh, to relate the uh, opposite and the adjacent side, opposite being ry, adjacent being rx. I'll write that in this form, tan is equal to opposite over adjacent or in physics terms, ry over rx. Taking the inverse tangent of both sides, I get theta is equal to inverse tan ry over rx. And when I plug these numbers into my calculator, ry being negative 60.1, dividing it by negative 275.1, uh, I end up getting uh, 12 degrees. You should, however, recognize that this 12 degree resultant that you've just calculated here is in quadrant number one, uh, which is actually not true. The, the negative over the negative here, you've got a negative over a negative, and so therefore uh, both the x and the y pieces uh, end up, the, the ratio of the y over the x ends up being positive since these negatives cancel out. And your calculator is not sure whether it's a first or a third quadrant vector. You need to then recognize that it's not 12 degrees 
but it's 180 degrees plus 12 degrees. So our actual angle here, theta, will be 180 plus 12, or 192 degrees. Our final answer, basically answering the, the question of both magnitude and direction. Here's our magnitude, 281.6 kilometers, and our direction being 192 degrees. So I would write that as uh, my final answer being 280 kilometers, comma, uh, 190 degrees dealing with significance.